makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life, Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Max Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good, it's refreshing, and the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. So chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum often, every day. Millions enjoy it, and you will, too. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his mama Basco in Italy. The thing I'm a notice about the American, he's a like to join a lot of clubs. Yeah, they got a Masons, a club, a Shriners, Elks, the Mooses, the Rotarians, the Lions. Even I got a Kennel a Club. But it's a one a strict rule. You don't get in unless you a dog. <laughs> and I don't think all the clubs are the only for the bigger people of Mamma Mia. America's got what's called Boy Scouts. Here the young boys are learning how to cross old ladies in the street. And I have to tie myself up in a knot. How <laughs> about me? I'm like all Americans. I also belong to the Antique Deal Association. And I'm feel very proud because they take me in. This week I'm feel all excited because in a couple of days they're going to run a bigger dance. And today I'm supposed to get my tickets in the mail. Oh, excuse me, Mamma Mia, I see a customer. Hello. Uh, Mr. Basco? Yes, yes, that's I'm me. Mr. Crawford from the Antique Dealers Association. Oh, uh, <laughs> good. Uh, I'm a belonger there, too. Uh, Mr. Basco, I'm on the entertainment committee. Mamma mia. Do you mean association is to send you down a gesture to entertain me? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's about your dance tickets. I was supposed to mail them, but since I was passing by your neighborhood, I thought I'd drop them off personally. Here you are. One for you and one for your wife. What do I say? Oh, I didn't know you were single. That's all right, as long as I'm enough. <laughs> well, anyway, Mr. Basto, be sure to be there. We're expecting some mighty important people there. Our past presidents, with a spoon, filling gas, with a bottom. Hmm. Selling is a spoon, a winner, gas, and a winner, bottom. Uh, no, with a spoon, filling gas, and with a bottom. They're all big American names. Yeah, so American, I can't even uh, pronounce them. <laughs> hey, you've got something there. Well, I'll see you at the dance, eh, Basco? Yeah, sure, Mr. Crawford, sure. Yeah, bye. Right. Goodbye. Hmm, I want extra ticket. Wonder who I'm going to go with to with me. <laughs> Maybe some of the others. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Oh, hello, Chris Quarley. Hey, Luigi, who is that fancy-looking fella just to walk out of the store? The exterminator? No, but, well, he's uh, from my antique deal association. My antique deal association. Oh, what? That's a nothing. That's a just a, the ASPCA for dead of furniture. <laughs> no, but, well, don't make fun of my association. It's a real important American club. Oh, stop. You would have joined any American club that's willing to take you, including the YWCA. <laughs> That's not the truth, Pasquale. No? Who joined the auto club, even though he ain't got a car? Whatever was it, because I'm... Oh, go away, go away. Listen, you would have joined the Alcatraz if they would have changed their name to the American Crooks Association. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, since I'm forwarded to you from Italy, you become an so American, you make a George Washington look like a foreigner. Now, Pasquale, don't, don't, please, don't make a fun of him, Washington. I'm not. And the worst thing you ever did was to join up with this antique deal association. What did this fellow want, anyway? 
Well, uh, he's to give me two tickets for a big dance this week. Mm. Two tickets, eh, Luigi? <laughs> <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, Luigi. I ain't against all the clubs. No. That's funny, I'm not to take a roasting. <laughs> Who's asking you? What makes you think I'm going to get down on my hands and knees and beg you to take my daughter to that old dad? Don't you give me credit for some proudness? No, but I'm a sorry, Pasquale. I'm a, I'm, I'm a spoken too quick. That's a better. Luigi, please thank her, Rosa. <laughs> no, Pasquale, maybe, maybe some other dance. Not that this one, because there's going to be lots of big Americans at this dance. So what? The Rosa's the biggest American ever lived. <laughs> Pasquale, please, please, try to understand that. I understand the plenty. Rose ain't good enough for your hot class of friends. Who do you think's going to be there anyway? Rockefeller? Morgan? Sears the Roebuck? <laughs> but if they're going to have some big American people important names like a wizard, a spoon, a telling, and a gas, and a winter's a bottom. All right. <laughs> All right, take a Rose along. I'm going to change her name to Taft Hartley. <laughs> Well, I didn't expect that you would understand it. I understand only one thing, that you became a big snoob. Snoob, but what's that? That's a snob and a boob, that's what I <laughs> well, excuse me now, Pascal, I'm going to go to my night to school. Oh, go, go. Let's see if you can find some American born, a ritzy, pitsy girl who's going to go with a greenhorn or a boob like you. Well, don't worry about me, Pascal. I'm going to find her. Never. You won't be satisfied unless you can dig up a Betsy Ross for a dance in a party. <laughs> So you got to get a girl for the dance, oh, Luigi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm going to get the one. Luigi, did you think about Rosa? Yeah, and I'm still got to get a girl. Oh, wait, Luigi. I got just the girl for you. College graduate, American born, everything. Oh, good, Shirky. No, no, wait. No, she wouldn't be so good for you. Why not, sir? Her husband is the cello type. <laughs> <laughs> oh, smile, Luigi. We'll get you a girl even if I got to put on some blonde curls and go along with you. <laughs> Quiet, fellas. Teach you. Good evening, class. Good evening, Miss Nicholson. Well, let's see how smart we are today. I assigned you the chapter on the amendments to the federal constitution. Who can tell us how many amendments there are, Mr. Howitt? Well, I got to figure out my system. The Constitution was 1789. I drop off the 8 to 9, take the 17, which is my nephew Seymour's age, add on his sister Shirley's age, which is 6, and I get 23. So, there is 23 amendments to the Constitution. Wrong. <laughs> Miss Paulding, you're going to tell me how old Seymour is. <laughs> Stick around, Horowitz. If they ever limit the president to two terms and Hawaii becomes a state, your answer is going to be perfect. <laughs> Well, uh, suppose we take a piecemeal. What were the first ten amendments called, Mr. Olson? The Bill of Rights. Now, tell us what the 13th Amendment is about. Uh, the 13th Amendment abolished slavery. Mr. Horowitz, the 16th Amendment. Income taxes were authorized. Mr. Basco, the 19th Amendment. Huh? Uh, Mr. Olson, tell him. Woman suffering. That's my trouble, Miss Balding. What? I'm got the woman suffering. <laughs> Pasco, what on earth are you talking about? I'm a suffer because I'm a not going to find a woman. Ach, don't listen to him, Miss Balding. He's just a fashimmered bachelor. <laughs> Luigi means for his antique dealer's dances, we can eat the girl. Yeah, no, I, I'm going to find some, some a nice American girl. Some, uh... Miss Pasco, why are you staring at me? I'll be down to get you in the taxi, honey. Better be How about this? Stop that, all of you. <laughs> oh, I got it. I just remember. What? What? Last week, a very nice young girl moved into my building. I saw her name in the letter box. Jane Brown. Jane Brown. Oh, it's a wine. A fine, a wonderful American name. And what a good looker. Yeah, but it's just how you know she's going to... Well, I mean... I mean, who, who's going to ask her? Don't be bashful, Luigi. You just go right up to her and say, Pardon me, Miss Brown, but don't I know you from some place? I'm aware. Atlantic City, maybe. No, I'm, I'm a never was there. St. <laughs> Louis? I'm a never was there, neither. 
Ach, Luigi, think of some place where you wash and put hair there. Yeah, but just... <laughs> Because I'm, I'm no got to the nerve. All right, I do it for you. You, you gonna ask for me, Schultz? Yeah, for you, Luigi. I'm gonna be Ciano de Schulzerak. <laughs> Hello? Luigi, this is Cyrano. Listen, I found settled. I got you Chain Brown. Oh, my mommy, I sure some could have kissed you. Please, save that for the girl. <laughs> sure, sir. Is she nice? She's nice. Luigi, if I was 20 years younger, I would be calling you from Niagara Falls now. Ah! <laughs> oh, sure, sir. Hey, but, uh, but are you sure she's, uh, she's uh, going to go with me? Positive. I gave you a great big build up. Is that the... Yeah, sure. Don't disappoint her, Luigi. Yeah, but now, sure, so you, you didn't tell her no lies about me. Of huh? course not. How oh, good. Uh, uh, what do you say about me, sure? Nothing. Only that you are a combination of Gregory Peck and Jimmy Stewart with a mad dash of Errol Flynn. Come on, mother. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that will help carry you through a busy, strenuous day feeling more relaxed and satisfied. From time to time, especially when you're tense or under pressure, chew a stick of Wrigley Spearmint Gum. You see, the good, easy chewing goes right along with what you're doing. It helps relieve that feeling of strain and tension so that work goes smoother and time passes more pleasantly. Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum tastes good, too. It freshens your mouth, sweetens your breath, and gives you long-lasting enjoyment and satisfaction. So when you've got a job to do and you've got to keep going at your best, chew refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum. Millions find it helpful, and you will, too. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, tonight is a big dance for my association, and the sure has got me a real nice American girl, Jenny Brown, who I'm gonna soon gonna meet. I'm so nervous. I'm, I'm, I'm wonder what I'm, I'm gonna do to make impression because maybe she's gonna be disappointed in me. Oh, oh, Pasquale. Luigi, why don't you take her off? So she can dance, can't she? She's got two feet, ain't she? Mascara, when you dance with Russia, you've got to swear she's got a six to fit. <laughs> Luigi, that's because you always make the same mistake. You try to lead the Rosa instead of following her. Yeah, but, uh, but, but, Scully, with the Rosa, you don't lead, you just follow. And you pray for the armistice. <laughs> Besides, I'm already got a girl, Pascal, a nice American girl. Her name is Jane Brown. What? Oh, you two faced a double time and a no good. I... No, no, Pascal, please stop, stop. You, you're making a bigger thing out of a little thing. Please, don't teach me the father in law business. <laughs> All right, go, go on. Make a fool of yourself. Uh, just look out of you. Well, what, what? The, uh, what? Jacket with a belt in the back uh, and that. Bunch of wild curly hair. <laughs> well, all right, so nobody's going to laugh at me, Pasquale. I'm going out right now for a new suit and a haircut. Ah, good. Now, look, if you want to make a big impression, make sure you get the latest American haircut. What's it is, Pasquale? The butch. <laughs> butch? That's a real American haircut? Sure. Everybody in America's a god. And if you don't believe me, see that a new picture by six convicts. Oh, I'm the jail. Yeah, but where, where, where am I going to get this butcher haircut? In a butcher shop, where else? Pasquale, I'm getting tired of you making the fun of me. And now I'm going to have to buy a good and new suit for myself. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yes, sir, can I help you? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm like to buy a new suit. Something that's going to look a nice for American girls. Certainly. One or two pairs of pants. Huh? 
Would you like a suit with two pairs of pants? You think I'm going to be too warm? What do you mean, too warm? I'm used to wearing a winter pad, thank you. Oh, <laughs> very. <clears throat> now, here on this rack, we have some of our finest suits just imported from England. How much do they cost? Only $150. Please, the way you keep an American suit, sir. Well, here on this rack. Now, how do you like this tweed? No, no, thanks, sir. This herringbone, perhaps? This what? <laughs> herringbone. <laughs> what a wonderful country where they make a suit from a little herring, sir. <laughs> You're making it a wonderful afternoon for me. Now, <laughs> here's a nice number, sir. It's going like hotcakes. Would you like to try on the jacket? All right, sir. No, 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 no. Take off your jacket first. That's the necessary? Well, yes, yes. But wait, wait. How much is this suit to cost, sir? Only eighty-nine fifty, And believe me, it's a steal. I'm sorry. I'm not going to afford even to steal it, sir. <laughs> Oh, you're delightful. Sir, just, <laughs> just how much are you prepared to spend on a suit? Twenty. Twenty? Dollars? What do you think I mean? A cent? <laughs> just making sure, that's all. Now, follow me. All right, sir. <laughs> Careful, going down the cellar steps, please. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia, is it, is, it, is it so dark down here? Yes. Yeah. Well, frankly, you're the first customer we've had down here since we ran our closing business sale ten years ago. Oh, <laughs> all right, this is it. Anything you see on the rack, twenty dollars. They all are looking nice. Mm hmm. Hmm. Uh, this one has got a beautiful weave. What the color is it? Hey, wait a minute, I'll light a match. All right. <laughs> beautiful weave. That's a spider web. <laughs> hey, look, Mister Please. I'm... I'm going to have a suit for bigger dance that my antique association is going to get to for tomorrow night. Uh -huh. And I'm going to look good because it's for some nice American girl that, that I'm never met. So, so what do you think I'm sure to do? Stay home tomorrow and listen to the radio. <laughs> Mama, I'm, but I'm, I'm going to get a suit. Oh, wait, wait. What have we here? Here's something that might be good. A blue serge, size 38. It should fit you. A 38, uh... Would this be good for the party, you think? My friend, blue serge is always in good taste at formal affairs. I had an uncle who was buried in one last month. <laughs> good, and then I'm the thank you. Good, good. Mm -hmm. uh, Fatima, apartment 21. 20. Ah, that's it. Jenna Brown. Mamma mia, I'm so nervous. I think my stomach is going to fall out. <laughs> well, I pick up a you cottage, Luigi. Ring a bell and say hello to the American girlfriend. Hello. Won't you come in? Huh? You are Luigi Bosco. Yes, Jenna. And you, you, you mailboxes say Jenna Brown. Oh, my name is Janice Broven. But it's easier for a mailman. Jane Brown. You, but... But... Uh, but, but, but you come from the other side? Oh, that's right. Same side as you come from. Yeah, but I've been here longer. <laughs> how long have you been here? Three years. How long have you been here? Ten months. Ten months? And you still speak with an accent? <laughs> you take me to the dance, Mr. Bosco? But, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, I'm... Uh, Oh, that is Schultz, American girl. I'm more American than she is. <laughs> oh, Basco. Yeah, 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 I'm a coming. Hey, Janice, if you don't mind, I'm going to call you Jenny Brown. Sure. I'd like you to meet some of our oldest members. Now, this is Mr. Witherspoon. How are you, Basco? I'm a pretty good, different. Last week, I'm having a little cold. And but this is Mr. Tellingas. How are you, Basco? Very good. And last week, I'm having a little cold. And, and then... this is our last club president, Mr. Winterbottom. How are you, Mr. Basco? Well, my cold... Now, over here... <laughs> Mamma mia, I could have caught you pneumonia. Nobody's going to listen. <laughs> Who is this charming young lady with you, Basco? My name is... Uh, excuse me, friend. I'm, I'm, I'm going to see Mr. Crawford. He's over there, and I, I see he's away with me. 
I'll wait here, Luigi. Well, Basil, I'm glad you could make it. Are you having fun? Well, uh, Did you bring a girl? Yeah, but but I'm a left her with a selling spoon and went to gas and a call about them. <laughs> I mean, it was a call. Daddy, dear, will you please be a doll and hold my earring? It fell off again. All right, dear. Oh, uh, Miss Basil, meet my daughter, Doris. Charmed, I'm sure. Charmed, and I'm a positive. <laughs> <laughs> Doris has a week off from her study. That's tonight. Nice, so what happened? I closed it down to your night school. Oh. <laughs> Doris is a Wellesley girl. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking she's a looking very Wellesley too. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I stole a week's vacation. Oh, come now, Mr. Basco. Don't look at me so disapprovingly. Haven't you ever cribbed? Cribbed? Oh, sure, till I was a five, then I slept on a bed. <laughs> oh, how funny, Miss Vasco. <laughs> oh, I adore the continental type of foreign origin. Um, are you from France or Spain or, or Italy, perhaps? Well, uh, I could listen forever to a continental accent. It's so romantic and different. Are you from Spain? I adore Spain. Oh, Mamma mia, you talk a whole English language in one time. <laughs> That's my little girl. Now, Basco, don't leave before 10 o'clock. I'm going to present a gold watch to Tillingas for having found the most interesting antique of the year. That's a nice... Uh, what's he found? Some medal that once belonged to General Kosciuszko. Shall we dance, Mr. Basco? Well, uh, uh, maybe later. Oh, come on now. You don't want to be a wallflower, do you? What a flower? Mm-hmm. Playing, Basco. A wallflower is someone who doesn't dance at the party. Mamma mia, I think Americans have left the more words out to the dictionary than they put in. <laughs> Mr. Basco, who's that girl waving to you from the corner of the room? I, ne- I never saw before in my life. Come on, I'll show we dance to And then Daddy bought me a Cadillac for my birthday. Oh, it was adorable. And Tommy borrowed it and smashed it to pieces. And we had an awful time with the insurance company. And, Mr. Basco, am I boring you? Mm-hmm. No, no, I'm, I'm going to listen to you all night. Sir. Well, anyway, mm-hmm. this year I decided I might go out for the tennis team. You should see my backhand. Mama, they don't tell me you got another hand in the back of you. <laughs> Basco, I can see you've never been on a court. I only want you when I'm got a ticket for jaywalking. Oh, <laughs> stop. Look, you can come over some Saturday. I can give my Cadillac a rest, and we can drive to the court in yours. Do you have a caddy? I asked the buddy, you mean a kitty. <laughs> I mean a caddy. Kitty, caddy. Mine had a nine of babies the last week. <laughs> Adorable. <laughs> All right, everybody. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. Please, quiet. Will you please be seated? Luigi, I'm looking for you all night. Oh, <laughs> hello, Jenna. No. Oh, come on, over here. Sit down, please. Uh, fellow members, uh, we come now to the high point of the evening's entertainment, the presentation of the prize watch to the member who discovered the most interesting antique of the year. This year, the gold watch goes to one of our most revered members, and here he is, Arthur Tillinghast. <laughs> Thank you, fellow members. This is a great honor. My discovery was this authentic medal, which was worn by General Kosciuszko during his famous war campaign. Look at it. Definitely circa 1750 and in remarkably rare condition. <laughs> Frankly, I haven't prepared very much on Mr. Kosciuszko. Thaddeus, I believe his first name was. Excuse me, sir. Yes? The name is Thaddeus. Mama, 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 is it going to make a trouble? Yes, young lady. In Poland, we say his name Tadeusz Kosciuszko. But uh, in America, Tadeusz Kosciuszko is fine. Now, Jenna, Jenna, please, please. <laughs> Thank Jenna. you, young lady. Tadeusz Kosciuszko. How's that? Very good. You say it like you're going to sneeze, and you got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mama, man, not, not there, the last one I Well, as I was saying, I'm afraid I'm somewhat of a disappointment inasmuch as I didn't study m- much on Mr... Kosciuszko. Good for you. Jenny, Jenny, please. Perhaps please. the young lady can tell us something. Oh, oh, yes. I shall be very happy to. We Poles are proud of Kosciuszko. We regard him as our Thomas Jefferson. He volunteered in your American Revolution, and General Washington made him his chief officer. Go on, please. Well, your Congress gave him special thanks. Also, the privilege of American citizenship. Also, the annual pension. Kosciuszko never forgot America. 
The rest of his life, till he died, 1817, he always fights very hard to make Poland free. Thank you very much, young lady. Naturally, you're uh, Polish. I am was Polish, soon to be American, like General Kosciuszko and my friend who brought me, Mr. Luigi Basco. Oh, that's very, very nice. Friends, I'm, a, I'm a sorry, but... No, I'm, I'm a very happy I'm, I'm a brother here. Fine. What's her name? Her name... Uh, Mizanish Bravna. Luigi, we say good night here in the hallway. All right? Yeah, but uh, but uh, Jane, I'm 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 all your big apology. Why, Luigi? Well, because I'm, I'm acting terrible all the night. But Jen, only reason I'm going to talk you out was... Uh, Schultz is, is told me you was American. And I, I owe you a big apology too, Luigi. You do? Mm-hmm. Schultz told me you were born in Boston. <laughs> you mean you, mean you was expected to some American fella? <laughs> I think so. Uh, then I... Then I guess... I guess you was a disappointed, huh? Well, at first, well, maybe. Then I, I was a very stupid. I, after all, all Americans, as they come over from my other side, only some a little before the others. Uh. Luigi? Yes, sir? You said you loop yes. What's uh, that? In Polish, I like you. Jenna? Yes, Luigi. Yeah, and this means in English? That the means in English, yeah. <laughs> Luigi? Huh? Say, good night now. All right, sir. Viva la Casiasco! had a good time with the dancer. I met a lot of nice people. A wonderful girl. And I found a wild The one thing I couldn't believe is true. But I found out really something happened 10 years in Chicago. Crawford Avenue was a change to Pulaski Street in honor of another great Polish general who was with the Kosciuszko. Mama, who knows it? Maybe someday you're going to come to Chicago. I'm going to take you down to Market Street. But then it's going to be changed maybe to Vasco Boulevard. <laughs> Vasco Lillemagrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you that chewing Wrigley Spearmint Gum is the easy, enjoyable way to sweeten your breath and help keep your mouth feeling fresh and clean. There's lots of lively, full-bodied, real spearmint flavor in Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum, and you can chew and enjoy a stick of Wrigley's as long as you like, any time, any place. So do as millions of people do. Keep a package of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum with you all the time. And whenever you want a taste treat or you want to freshen your mouth, chew a stick. Remember, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum gives you chewing enjoyment plus refreshing, long-lasting flavor. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at the same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco and Alan Reed as Pasquale. Mary Schiff as Miss Spaulding.